What makes a good trail horse? They need to be a quarter horse. A paint? Really, really good feet. They don't need shoes. Either way, they need to be beautiful. But seriously, all joking aside, what does make a good trail horse? Well, in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you my list of things that I would be prioritizing in shopping for a horse. Wings would be actually pretty awesome. Now at the top of my list is a horse that has a positive, willing attitude on trail. This is a horse that actually likes to be on the trail. There are some horses that actually prefer arena work. That's where they're happiest, that's where they shine. And then there are some horses that actually are much happier campers when they're out hitting the trails. And I would be riding a horse in both situations, on the arena and on the trail, so that I could get a feel for kind of how this horse behaves, how he feels, what kind of behavior he exhibits. Now, Along with that is a horse that's actually really confident and brave when they're on the trail. Being on trail is tough for horses. There's a lot of different obstacles. There's a lot of newness in different environments, and it requires the type of horse that has some confidence to be able to handle the trail well. Now, of course, a big part of this equation too is my confidence. And I would say the less confident that I am or the more inexperienced I am, the more confident and brave I'm gonna need my horse to be. Now, all this implies that the horse has some trail experience already. And I would definitely be looking at that. Personally, I don't wanna take a gamble that I'm gonna be purchasing a horse that's gonna end up either not liking the trail or not gonna be a good fit on the trail. In particular, I would be prioritizing a horse that has experience with the obstacles that I'm gonna encounter on the trails in my area. Now here in the Silicon Valley, we have a lot of cyclists. We have off-leash dogs, we have bridges, we have water crossings, we have a ton of deer that just jump out of nowhere. Experience with traffic would be a huge plus, as well as a horse that is not too freaked out by plastic bags or things that kind of wave around. By the way, if you're enjoying this video so far, please give it a thumbs up. Now, some for sale ads will say that a horse is not spooky, which is great. I definitely don't want a super spooky horse on the trail. But what does that mean exactly? Well, to me, spooky means a horse that's reactive, that doesn't have a lot of experience being relaxed around things like bikes and tarps and dogs. But instead of assuming that we all sort of mean the same thing, I would be asking the seller, well, what kind of spook does he have? Because I think assuming that a horse is never gonna spook at something is a little bit unrealistic. They are living creatures after all. And instead I would ask, well, what does his spook look like? Some horses spook and they spin and they take off that's probably not gonna be the horse that I wanna take on trail. Ideally, I would love to have a horse that'll spook in place. So my first horse was like this. Basically, if he saw something that freaked him out, he went, Ooh. and that was it. And that's pretty easy to sit. It's also super important to me to have a horse that loads well into the trailer and is a good traveler. A lot of horses struggle loading into the trailer. And if you're wanting to go out on trail on a regular basis, that's just a battle you don't wanna fight every day. Now, like a lot of things, good trailer loading skills can be taught, but personally, I would prefer to buy a horse that already knows how to do that comfortably. So what does it mean to have a horse that is a good traveler? Well, to me, that means a horse that's comfortable being hauled for longer distances, whether that is an hour, three hours, or maybe even longer than that. That's also gonna be a horse that can handle eating and drinking away from home. So a horse that is comfortable and used to traveling is going to have no problem drinking water that I've either brought in my trailer or safe water that we found out on the trail. Maybe that's a, a stream or a lake or a water trough that's designated for horses. Either way, I wanna know that my horse can keep himself hydrated and also prevent colic. It's also really important that they eat. So again, because I go horse camping and I like to go for longer trail rides, for my horse to stay healthy and to keep his electrolytes up, it's gonna be super important that he's willing to eat. I'm also gonna be looking for a horse that is willing to ride out alone, as well as ride comfortably in groups. I am someone that does a fair amount of riding socially with friends, but I also do a good amount of trail riding by myself. And so for me, I'm gonna need an extra brave horse that's willing to do that and can handle being out alone. So a horse that's not buddy sour or bark 
barn sour is gonna be super important for me. Now, when we're riding out in groups, it's gonna be a huge plus to have a horse that's not super competitive or racy with other horses, that doesn't kick other horses, and that is okay if the group gets a little bit ahead of us. He's not gonna be rushing to get up ahead with them and completely forget that I'm on his back. When I've test ridden horses in the past, I've actually intentionally ridden the horse away from the group just to see how he handles it. I'd also prefer a horse that doesn't need shoes. It's a nice cost savings to have a barefoot horse and the trails in my area definitely allow for that. Now, personally, I like a forward horse, but when I was a beginner, I was looking for a horse that had a little more woe than they had go. But at this point, I really enjoy having a horse that likes to go and not just go. I also want a horse that's got smooth, comfortable gates. And so when I'm testing horses, I'm definitely gonna be testing them at all three gates just to see how it feels. Some horses have better trots than others, better canters than others, you get the idea. So a lot of it is just testing out the feel of the horse and seeing if it jives with the way that I ride and the experience that I wanna have. Now, a horse with great movement, of course, is super important, but there's a good amount of time that I spend when I'm trail riding and horse camping where my horse needs to be able to stand. And so I wanna know that my horse can stand quietly, whether he's tied to the trailer or whether he's tied to a hitching post out somewhere on trail. It's also really important that he's willing to stand for the farrier and the vet without any problems. I would also be prioritizing a horse with a clean health history without a prior history of lameness issues or health problems. Now for me, this also happens to include arthritis. My first horse had arthritis that we managed successfully for a few years with injections and oral medications and supplements. But as he started to decline more and more, my skills grew and grew. And I got to a point where I really wanted to be a more aggressive, faster rider. And he was really getting to a stage in his life where he benefited from some very flat walking and some easygoing rides, but nothing to the extent that I was looking to do. And I think that can be a great situation for some folks. There are a lot of really wonderful older horses that are very well experienced, very calm, very gentle horses that just happen to have a little bit of arthritis that is manageable with medication. It's not going to be a deal breaker for them. Uh, but in my case, I have to be extremely selective about the horses I have in my life because of my finances. And I'm looking to do a lot more aggressive riding than what a horse with arthritis would allow. So some other bonus things that I would be looking for is a horse that's an easy keeper, saves money, it allows you to keep that horse in pasture, and you don't have to worry about keeping weight on them all the time. I would also be potentially looking for a horse that's relatively easy to fit for a saddle. I've watched some folks go through some serious struggles because their horse has really unusual conformation and trying to find a saddle has been kind of a nightmare for them. And I also think it would be nice to have a horse that has a darker muzzle. Uh, Fame's pink on his face and so I do have to put sunscreen on him on a regular basis to prevent him from getting sunburns uh, and decrease his risk for skin cancer. Now you might have noticed that up to this point I have been using the word he, which begs the question, well, mare or gelding? I personally don't have a preference either way. I have only ever owned geldings, but I have friends who ride mares who love their mares, and I have talked to a number of people who are very devoted to their mares. So for me, it really comes down to just the individual horse. I'm not super picky about mare versus gelding, although I know people tend to have really strong opinions about this. For me, stallions aren't even really a consideration, uh, just simply because most of the boarding facilities in my area won't accept a stallion. You know, the hormones and the ladies. And while I've met people who ride stallions that don't have problems in that department, it's just an extra layer of complication that at this point I don't really feel prepared to deal with. Now, while there's no such thing as a perfect horse, I'm definitely going to try and find as close to my ideal as possible when I'm out shopping. This is where having a professional come with me to look at horses would be super helpful because it would give me another perspective outside my own on what I'm seeing and what I'm experiencing with a horse. This is the stuff that works for me that I would be prioritizing at this point in my horse journey. But your list might look different. So I would encourage you to watch the first part of this video if you haven't already because that'll delve into some of the questions that I would encourage you to ask to figure out what kind of trail horse would be a good fit for you. Those of you alive in the 80s will remember these.